Robert Frank with CNBC just wrote an article with a big update related to the financial status of the properly famously known as The One out in Bel Air, California. So I know that we've talked about this project at length here on my channel, and I even toured the property about a month back with one of the lead contractors on the project. But with this home making front page news on CNBC this week, I of course had to dive into the details and give you all an update in case you didn't see the article yourself. In today's video, we are going to get into the highlights of this article specifically, so huge shout out to Robert Frank and CNBC for putting this detailed piece together. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, my name is Scott. I'm a real estate investor myself out of Arizona. So here on my channel, we talk all things real estate. If you're into that kind of thing, think about hitting the subscribe button down below before we go any further. But regardless of whether or not you decide to subscribe, if you could at least give me a thumbs up, that would really help to support me, this video, and my channel. Assuming that some of you guys who stumble across this video have never heard about this house before, I'll give you a quick summary about what's going on. About 10 years, ago, there was this developer, Niall Niami, who bought a property in Bel Air at the top of a mountain for about $28 million. He went on to chop off the top of the mountain, then partner with the architect, Paul McLean, and put together a world-class team of designers and contractors to build one of the biggest and most expensive homes on the planet. This home has every amenity that you can imagine, including a movie theater, a bowling alley, a golf simulator, a nightclub, seven swimming pools, a 5,500 square foot master suite, a wellness center, a cigar lounge, and a wine room. The home is in the final stages of being built now as the contractors put on their finishing touches, then they hope to get their C of O, which means they can finally list the house for sale. The developer, Niall Niami, started teasing a price tag on this house of $500 million a few years back, but the home hasn't officially been listed for sale yet. The developer had some financial troubles over the course of the past year or so as he tried to get the project to the finish line, and a lot of those financial troubles are highlighted in this CNBC piece. This article is the biggest update that we've had on this spec project in a while, and I'm not gonna lie, I actually didn't even find the article myself, so thank you to all of you guys who sent me the link to check it out. The headline is just like I titled this video, it says most expensive home in America defaults on $165 million in debt and heads to sale. The fact that this article points to the home finally being headed for sale is interesting because I've been doing these videos a while and I found that there's a pretty common misconception that the home is already for sale, and that's not true. Anyways, the highlights of the article are first that the home has gone into a receivership after the owner, Niall Niami, has defaulted on his $165 million worth of loans. The 105,000 square foot estate is expected to be listed for lower than originally planned. And then of course that the receivership news makes a stunning reversal for this project, the one because the developer has been touting this project as his life mission. For anybody who saw the developer Niall's interview that he did with that other YouTuber producer, Michael, you know that he's saying that this project is going to change the world by doing socially distanced boxing matches in the lawn, and then by the reality show that he planned to film of his self in the house. Anyways, the biggest call out in the first few paragraphs of this article are around the price, and he talks about how the home will probably be listed for a lot less than the $500 million sale price that was originally advertised. I'll say here that after I toured the property myself, I 100% disagree with all of the haters who say that this home is a monstrosity or that it looks more like a commercial property compared to a residential property. I mean it wholeheartedly when I say that I can picture somebody actually wanting to live there, and I do believe that it will sell for top dollar whenever it's finished. The house is over the top for sure, but it feels a lot cozier than you would think because most the main living spaces are all on one level, and then all of the entertainment spaces are kind of tucked away on a lower level. In the next few paragraphs of the article, Robert calls out all of the specs on the property, which are a little bit different than what I experienced whenever I was there and what was previously reported, but he's close enough. And I like how he mentions that there was a planned jellyfish room and an ice bar, because those are two rooms that never made it to fruition, so clearly he had some insider information when he wrote this article. Next, he goes on to highlight how there was basically a California gold rush back in around 2014, when these developers like Niall Niami and Bruce Makowski were building these mega mansions and listing them at these crazy price tags, but then they ultimately sold for a lot less than they were originally asking. And he's totally right. I found that a lot of these developers are putting these crazy price tags on these homes, mainly just to grab people's attention. And even though they do sell for a lot less than they were originally asking, my math says that these developers are still making a ton of money on these deals. Next, Robert gets onto the debt detail of the property, which has grown significantly 
significantly since the last report that I read. He says that Niall's company has borrowed over $165 million on this project so far. The largest lender is Hankey Capital, as a lot of us know, and their debt has grown to $115 million alone. Then next, there's Yogi Security Holdings, which has lended a total of $36 million on this project. Then there's a the company Inferno Realty, who lended $7 million to the project. And then last, another company named Maybach Corporation Holdings, who also lent $7 million towards this spec build. Due to all of this debt piling up and not being paid, the lenders filed what's called a notice of default, which I explained in a previous video does not mean that the home has been foreclosed on, it just means that a notice of default has been filed. Robert goes on to explain the receivership condition that the property is in, which is the most interesting development yet. This guy, Ted Lanes from Lanes Management, has been named as the receiver in the project, and his job is to basically do everything that needs to be done in order to get the property sold. Honestly, it's a better option for the court to appoint somebody like Ted because if they instead pursued a foreclosure, that would cost them millions of dollars and it would not be a good look for the project. Anyways, Ted Lanes has a ton of work on his plate because now not only does he need to organize a list of all the people who are owed money on this project, but he also needs to organize a list of all the work that needs to be done on this project, and then he needs to get that work done so they can get their certificate of occupancy. Once that certificate of occupancy is issued, the idea is that the home will be much more desirable and marketable to buyers, which by the way, I totally agree with. In my opinion, this is probably one of the best things to have had happen to this project because while Niall Niami was a visionary in the beginning, for sure, he hasn't been able to get this project to the finish line. So hopefully Ted is able to make that happen, get this house sold, and then make all of the contractors and creditors whole. The last few paragraphs of the article sum up a couple of things that we already knew, and that is that Aaron Kerman and Rainey and Brandon Williams originally had the listing, and that their plans last were to list the home for sale somewhere around $288 million. Now again, in my opinion, after seeing the home, it's worth at least that price, and it also sounds like that price will be enough to get everybody paid, so I hope that the realtors are able to creatively market this place to all the billionaires out there to get this house sold, because that'll be the best case scenario for everybody involved. I didn't plan on doing any updates about this project for a while, but when I saw this article come out, I had to react. Since I toured the home myself, I've just had such a different perspective and level of respect for this project that makes it really hard for me to keep doing these videos, because sadly, there's just a ton of misinformed people on the internet who end up showing up in the comments section and hating on the size or the scale or the story of this project. But if you fall into that bucket, my ask of you is stop being a hater, don't judge a book by its cover, realize that there is way more to the story than you realize, and then just remember that there's a lot of people who put a lot of love and energy into making this masterpiece come to life. If you enjoyed the video, just one more reminder guys to hit the thumbs up button down below for me before you go. And if you haven't seen the tour that I did of this amazing property, I'll link to that here at the top at the end of this video. Make sure to go check that out. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. So until next time, see ya.